Welcome back, Poozers, to Green Lantern's podcast. I'm your host, Will Smith of Sector 2814, and on today's podcast, I'm bringing you breaking news that James Gunn has officially cast his Superman and his Lois Lane. I first discovered the news via The Hollywood Reporter on Twitter, and then I saw James Gunn verify it himself later on the app Blue Sky. The Hollywood Reporter states that after a lengthy search, David Cornsweet and Rachel Brosnahan will star in Superman Legacy, the film that will launch DC's new universe under writer-director Gunn and his DC studio co-boss Peter Safran. Just one day before, The Hollywood Reporter put out an article detailing some of the casting process that has been going on and the other actors and actresses who were being considered. The other two actors who made it to the screen test of the June 17th weekend was Nicholas Holt and Tom Brittany. Emma Mackey and Phoebe Dinovor were the finalists in the running to play Lois Lane. While Blue Beetle and Aquaman are also going to launch and hit movie theaters while James Gunn is in charge... Ultimately, it's Superman Legacy that is going to be the true jumping point of the future of DC Studios and what we see in movies going forward from DC. Now, I won't lie, I've read a lot of reactions on Twitter and Reddit, and typically they are very brutal for whoever is cast as whatever role you know people are fond of. Yet most of the reactions I've seen have been very positive for both David Cornsweet and Rachel Brosnahan. A lot of folks seem to be very in love with her after her performances in The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Right now, the announcement probably feels like a massive win for them. And this does give James Gunn some favor, at least a little bit, with diehard DC fans. But make no mistake, I'm sure they are feeling tremendous amounts of pressure to deliver as both Lois and Clark and James Gunn himself, because DC needs to get off on the right foot. The Flash was a good movie, but it just didn't nail it at the box office, and there's no signs that Blue Beetle or Aquaman are going to be even better. So it's the Superman movie that is going to jumpstart DC and hopefully get people to check out the films in theater and give the DC faithful some sense of comfort that we are in good hands and we are headed in a proper direction under James Gunn and Peter Safran. According to what I could find on the internet, it looks like Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, which is more or less the final film to come out before James Gunn releases Superman, has an expected release date of December 20th, 2023. James Gunn's Superman Legacy isn't supposed to release until July 11th, 2025. Now, you can do the math on that for me, but what I do know is that is a tremendous amount of time for the old regime to have their movies end and James Gunn with a large gap until his movies begin. The one perk or the one hope for DC at this point would be that if Blue Beetle and Aquaman don't perform up to expectations, then you have a very large amount of time to get the underperforming stigma that DC currently has around it out of their system, and we can focus on going back to theater and enjoying good movies, which I hope this will become. About David Cornsweet, The Hollywood Reporter says that this is a massive career shift for Cornsweet, not only being the number one on a call sheet of a studio film for the first time, but doing so as one of pop culture's most enduring heroes. Further, they write, the actor first broke out in Ryan Murphy's series The Politician, which was followed by a starring turn in another Murphy-backed Netflix series, Hollywood. Other credits include HBO series We Own This City and A24 horror sequel Pearl. Up next, there is the Apple series Lady in the Lake and Twister's sequel, Twister's. For Brosnahan, they write, Brosnahan is an Emmy and Golden Globe winner for her acclaimed series, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. She rose to prominence with House of Cards, which earned her an Emmy nomination. They ended their announcement with a quote from James Gunn about his relation to Superman. For an April cover story, Gunn told The Hollywood Reporter, I completely relate to Superman because he's everything I am. He's somebody who is an outsider who feels like an alien but also the ultimate insider, because he's fucking Superman. And that's kind of like what I feel like. Now, I understand people listening are like, Will, Will, 
I thought you were just covering Green Lantern stuff and then uploading your Reddit talks for free, that way they don't get lost. Why are you covering the Superman news? Why does it matter to you? And it matters to me because we've had one live-action Green Lantern adaptation, and it was not phenomenal. And I understand what momentum can do for a film, for a series, for a plethora of movies all under one brand. And for the HBO Max, Max Discovery, whatever you want to call the app by the time the show comes out, it's currently named Lanterns. I would love for there to be some positive momentum following James Gunn's opening act in charge of DC. If Superman Legacy ends up bombing and nobody watches Captain Commandos or anything else that they put out leading up to Lanterns, then there's a good chance that the show still gets made, but maybe the budget gets cut. And if the budget gets cut, there's a good chance we don't get the solid CGI effects that we deserve as a Green Lantern fandom. Or maybe the show has to change scope again from a bunch of lanterns over four time periods to something even smaller than what it is following Hal and John. Long story short... I do feel it's almost necessary for James Gunn to get on the right path immediately with his Superman legacy film and to have that film's goodwill roll over from that project to the next project to the next project all the way until we get to Lantern, where I hope the show is so good that regular people tune in to watch it as well as the DC faithful because I would love to go down the rabbit hole of exploring all the Lantern lore that there is with the different colors and spectrums and All that comes with being a massive Green Lantern fan. I would love to see that play out on television. So I hope that gives you folks an update and an understanding of why I'm covering the Superman news. I'm probably going to cover and continue to cover all things movie and TV related from James Gunn as it pertains to DC. Because it is eventually going to get us to Lanterns. And while it might not be super obvious, I'd be willing to bet my bottom dollar that when they cast... Superman, that's going to take them out of the running from playing a Hal Jordan or a Jon Stewart, for instance. So, in a roundabout way, Superman news does impact Green Lantern news. With that being said, until the next one, in brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power, Green Lantern's light.